celebrating uh, the verdict. And I just want to set the premise for what we're doing here today. Everyone saw Amber Geiger shed tears on the stand. But for the last 390 days, the mother of Botham John has shed tears away from cameras. And even with justice, we're not going to get we're not going to get Botham John back. Nor does this expiate for all of the other cases in which there was no justice. Botham was murdered in his own living room. Right. Mendo Jones was murdered or was shot as he was entering into his own car. Right. Stefan Clark was murdered in his own grandmother's backyard. A week after Botham John was killed in his living room, there was a man in Detroit whose case didn't make the national media in the same way. Abdullah Beard, who was murdered in his living room because the officer said they went to the wrong home where they had a search warrant for his neighbor. And he was armed, but he was gunned down in his own living room. So this is a systemic problem that obviously uh, involves the entire nation, but it's been particularly featured here in Dallas. And we're pleased with this verdict. And what I want to do is remind everyone that we need to censor the family first and foremost. They seek to extend the life of Botham. Botham was an incredible human being. He had an incredible spirit of generosity. His life mattered. And so today his death also matters. We seek to extend that generosity through the foundation, the Botham John Foundation, that his family is championing, to continue to extend that spirit of generosity. And so all of us should try to do the same and also make sure that his death is not in vain, that we, we actually expand this to have a broader discussion about policing here in Dallas and in this country. So I'm gonna hand it off to Pastor Waters and he'll introduce uh, the speakers after a few remarks. Thank you, Mama Omar. And on this past Sunday, which would have been Botham's birthday, uh, his mother made a statement that has resonated with all of us. Right. She said that when you lose a child, you feel contractions in your womb. Uh, I've never heard a statement as palpable as that in terms of the pain and grief and suffering that this family and so many others are enduring. So indeed, we want to continue to offer our prayers for the family in this day of justice. To center our moment together, I'm going to ask Pastor Via Kinley to come now and offer words of prayer. She'll be followed by John Phil and Wider with Brothers Against Police Brutality. Who we'll makes it? Let us bow our heads. Eternal God, our Creator. Lord God, we come standing collectively, dear Lord God, thanking you for being a God of justice, being a God of peace being a God of righteousness. Dear Lord God, we thank you for being a God for the oppressed, the marginalized, those, the least of them. Eternal God, we thank you right now for your continued strength to empower your servants, your agitators, your progenitors, dear Lord God, to stand and speak for those that don't have a voice. Lord, we thank you, God. We thank you for this time, for this moment, to bless your holy name just for being a God of righteousness. Amen. Continue to empower your servants to walk humbly with you. Continue to empower your servants to do mercy and walk humbly with you, dear Lord God, in peace, love, mercy, but more importantly, dear Lord God, to stand on the right side of justice to Lord God. So we bless your name and we thank you. Good afternoon everyone. It's a pleasure to be able to make a statement before we're here today. And I want to make that statement in the names of many of the people who aren't with us who helped bring us to this day. Right. It's been 46 years since the city of Dallas a police officer stood trial killing someone, shooting someone to death in the city of Dallas. And there have been hundreds of people killed during those four decades. People that were mentally ill, people that were unarmed, elderly people, and so forth. And it isn't likely that every one of those shootings was justified. Because none of them, between 1973 and 
2017 were even indicted. And we've had two indictments now in one trial. But is it likely that those hundreds of police shootings were all justified? Not likely. The DA didn't even investigate police shootings until about three years ago. They just took the folder from the police and, you know, fact-checked it, and that was it. No bill. I hope so. So I want to make this statement in the name of uh, City Councilwoman Elsie Faye Haggins, yeah. City Councilmember Fred Blair, who back in the 80s proposed the first police review board in Dallas at the council level. And I want to make this statement in the name of the founder of the Black Panther Party in Dallas, Fred Bell, later known as Fahim Minka, right. who had the original idea to take police complaints before the Civil Service Board. And I want to say a word for Charlie Young uh, and the Bodart Patriots and Juan Perez and the Brown Berets and all the people that worked down through the years to get this kind of verdict out of the city of Dallas. So with that in mind, uh, coming together from a wide range of religious traditions, concerned Dallas clergy and laity offer this statement of faith and commitment on today's verdict. First, we lift up the life and memory of Botham John, whose life was cut short by police violence in Dallas about a year ago. Nothing will return Botham to the center of his family, but the clear message of this jury's verdict will, we hope, bring a measure of relief to this family and justice to this community. Second, we want to thank this jury, which is probably the most diverse jury ever assembled in Dallas County. Right. The jury members had to grapple with a tragic set of facts and more so with a convoluted set of laws concerning the Castle Doctrine in Texas and mistakes of fact. And besides all the paradoxes that were thrown at them, this jury found its way to the heart of the fatal injustice suffered by Botham John to state clearly, this is wrong. This cannot go unanswered. That they delivered a message of accountability to law enforcement that we pray will echo across this nation and into the future. Third, we know this welcome verdict will not catalyze change in Dallas unless we take on the task of forcing that change ourselves. That's right. Unless we build on the work of activists and organizers like those I've named and many others that came before us here. There have been equally egregious abuses over the past 46 years in which no officer was charged, indicted, or faced a jury, or faced any discipline whatsoever, besides a paid vacation until they felt better. Fourth, as people of faith, faith, we're called upon to open a dialogue in this city, a dialogue for healing and for justice. We know that there are many cases, and I can name a few, like Clinton Allen, unarmed young man shot five times in the chest, once in the arm and once in the back by a Dallas police officer. No indictment, no charges, no trial. Jason Harrison killed on his own front porch, shot five times, twice in the back. No indictment, no charges, no trial. And there are many others here that we could name that are probably only remembered by their own immediate family. But we want to see these cases reopen. The investigative process is more rigorous now. There's more time spent on it. The public is demanding more accountability, and these cases need to be reviewed. Finally, we will not let what happened to Botham John be forgotten. Botham was, by all accounts, an exemplary human being. But you shouldn't have to be a saint Thank or virtuous in any Thank way you. to expect to be treated justly and fairly by this often misnamed criminal justice system. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right. I will now have statements uh, in this quarter from the faithful in Dallas, the Dallas Peace and Justice Center, and then representing the Dallas Black Clergy. where 
we hold back our anger and our need to retaliate and trust the community to bring a, a lawsuit against someone who has committed violence. That's why the DA uh, had to act on our behalf. But as so often has been the case, the community which has a stake in justice has been, has been frustrated and denied that justice. And so today is a good day to hear that the system has at last worked equally uh, in this way. We want the police department to be a model for us of what it means to be peace officers in our city right. for everyone. That's right. Right. Which means that when they have more power, that they have more responsibility to show us not to act out of fear, not to be afraid of our fellow citizens, whoever they are, but instead to show us how to transcend our fear by our training and by our preparation so that we protect one another and create a wholesome city. Today is a step in that direction and we are pleading with everyone in this city to see it that way, uh, to work together to create the systems and conditions under which we can all live together as a people in love and harmony. Thank you very much. Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Hadi Jawad. I'm the executive director of the Dallas Peace and Justice Center. And the spelling of my name is H-A-D-I-J-A-W-A-D. It is a rare, momentous, and a glorious day in Dallas, Texas today. Rare because we don't see police officers who have taken innocent lives held accountable. The last time we saw this was in 1974 when Officer Daryl Kane played Russian roulette with the 12-year-old Santos Rodriguez who sat handcuffed in his squad car. We have not forgotten Santos Rodriguez. It's a momentous day because we think with this verdict the potential, the possibility for change in Dallas exists. It might not be the dawn of a new day, but we think just because justice was rendered today that we are seeing the first gleams of sunlight in a dark, dark Dallas. And it's a glorious day because we have tasted a little bit of justice today. Yes. Most importantly, justice for the both for the, for the John family. Because justice is inextricably linked with what is sacred. And what is sacred is also the divine. So justice has come to the John family, and we are prayerful, we are hopeful that this justice will ease their suffering, to ease the burden that fate cast upon their shoulders. And we are really hopeful that this verdict today, this verdict of justice for the John family, will help this city heal it will help empower our activists, our preachers, our civic leaders to carry on a conversation about who we are. Who are we as a city? What is the value of human rights? And most of all, the value of a human life with dignity. Thanks. My name is Frederick Douglas Haynes III. I'm senior pastor of Friendship West. Baptist Church here in Dallas. I joined with my amazing faith colleagues who have joined together and have served as the conscience of this city for quite some time. As has been said, Sorry. this is an historic okay. day, but it's very sad that it's historic. It's very sad that many in my community, upon hearing the verdict, did not rejoice with the sense of, okay, this is a great victory, but we felt a sense of relief almost surprised and shocked yes. because there's such an ugly track record in this city and in this country when it comes to unarmed right. black bodies right. being shot by those who were sworn to serve and protect us. Right. And we recognize that the policing system in this nation is rooted in the social control of black bodies. And so for that, with that being the case, we are here today saying, Yes, we are glad for this victory. We are relieved that this victory has taken place. But justice took place overruling a system that is broken. 
And we have gathered as faith leaders to say, until the system is fixed, you're going to see us continue to come yes. until the system is fixed where there's not a double standard because all of us know that how Amber Geiger was treated upon shooting both them John, if that had been reversed, and Bo had shot her. The sad reality is he would not have been protected by Mike Mata, who needs to step down and resign. That's he right. would yeah. not have been treated with respect. He probably would have been dead before he could get out. Why? Because there's a double standard in this system. So justice overruled that double standard. Justice overruled the fact that there's a training that is needed in the policing system that recognizes the humanity of black bodies. What is it about a black body that will cause a police officer not to de-escalate a situation, but instead to escalate the situation and result in black death? And so we are grateful for the family of both. What an amazing family. We salute that family. That family needs to be continuously in our prayers because the heartbreak can never be replaced, can never be fixed. But the good news is justice today overrule a system that is broken. And until that system is fixed, you'll see these faith leaders serving as the conscience of this city and of this nation. Before we uh, close uh, with uh, prayer and censoring by Rabbi Nancy Caston, and then we're also available for comments, uh, we'd like to also issue a statement to Dak Prescott as well as Jerry Jones. Yes. yes. Uh, prior to the death of both and John, Say that. Uh, they made the statement that they wanted to be a part of the solution. However, throughout this trial, throughout this past year, there has been silence from AT&T Stadium. Come on, man. We want to give them the invitation to join us in this work in revolutionizing police reform throughout this nation. They have the ability to do so. They do. We want to extend them this kind invitation to join us in the work. Until that time, we'll continue to take a knee. Yeah. Uh, oh, for those who have yeah. died, uh, unarmed and otherwise, uh, not only in this city, but all across this nation. Indeed, this is a day of justice, but there is much more work that needs to be done. Yes. Amen. 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 Rabbi Nancy Caston, I'm the Chief Relationship Officer for a new multi-faith organization called Faith Commons. And you might ask, um, what do fit people of faith have in common? And what we have in common is that we believe that the system that trains police officers is not the only system that needs attention right now. We have a system of faith that teaches us that we are all, every single human being created in the image of God. And we have a system that teaches us that knowledge is important, but that wisdom and discernment and prudence and understanding are also vital, and that is what makes us human. We are here today because fear and distrust overcame trust, love, and compassion. And each one of us
Thank you. Thank you.